Abba Namaste guys, Christian R. Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out this Friday evening here in Denver, Colorado. The sun is still setting, so it's kind of got that like weird lighting thing <clears throat> through the blinds, but I kind of like it. It's different, right? Different angles, different lighting, different shadowing, different everything, different topics. Omar, Abba Namaste, good to have you on. It's been a while since I've seen you on. Good to have you on. Let me tilt this a little bit this way. Um, Whoa, there's a moth in here. I don't think I've ever seen a moth in this apartment ever. Weird. So I was thinking, well, what are we going to talk about? As you guys know, we do these live streams every single day, rain, sleet, or shine, usually in the evenings or you know late afternoons. We talk about energy, healing, meditation, and practical spirituality for the purpose of moving your life forward, providing some nugget of truth or wisdom that was taught to be by my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, who you see behind me on the wall. And I was thinking, well, what are we going to talk about tonight? And I had an interesting conversation with a friend of mine. Him and I are like uh, lunch buddies. We used to be dance buddies. He's a client of mine as well. And, uh, you know... He learned Spanish, he took salsa lessons, and then he just was tearing it up, right? Dated Latin women. And he's a really interesting guy, and he was married for over 20 years in a quote-unquote loveless marriage, and he's been out of that, and now he's like, for the past uh, five or so years, he's been mixing it up, going on different dates, traveling around the world. Um, That's one of his big things. Pedro, I'm going to say, I love that he travels around the world. I love, have you ever noticed... People who do a lot of traveling, international, domestic, just a lot of traveling in general, have you ever noticed they tend to be very open-minded people? That's been something I've consistently and persistently noticed of people who travel a lot. They seem to be flexible. They seem to be adaptable. They seem to be... um, They seem to be more self-aware than other people that I've noticed that have not traveled. Just my observation. Don't know if I'm right. Don't know if I'm wrong. But just my observation. So he uh, was recently in the Philippines. Had a beautiful three-week trip in the Philippines. Scuba diving because that's his bread and butter. That's his specialty. And we're always uh, trading stories back and forth. (laughs) Yes, we are. (laughs) I made up, but I'm going to say we're always trading stories back and forth about relationship stuff. Because um, he came to me for, for he came to me for relationship healing, and then we worked on some things, and his perception about relationships went from here to here. And the joke that him and I made with one another is that the journey never ends. You never know it all about relationships because you're always learning more about yourself. You're always learning more about the other person, and then you're learning about the dynamic of the interaction between you and the other person. Hence the relationship. And then you have the relationships of that person's family, the, the, the relationships of your family members to this person. So it just, it, relationships are extraordinarily complex. And so you need to have people that have awareness, have understanding, have compassion, have a lot of like insight, Letty, I'm an Amaste, in order to have a successful relationship, right? So... When when we were sharing stories back and forth, and we've known each other for about five years at this point, s- some things that were coming out of my mouth, I realized were old patterns and programs, and certain things that were coming out of his mouth were old patterns and programs of relationships. I'm like, because we meet with each other probably once a month or once every six weeks to have lunch with each other. There's this beautiful Mexican restaurant that we both like to go to, but today we said, you know what, let's try sushi right? Because he's been on this weird sushi kick the past couple weeks. So we had sushi today and it was an all you can eat sushi buffet. And I'm like, at the end of it, I was like, I don't know if I can eat any more sushi for the rest of my life. I think I'm, I think I'm out. I think I'm tapped out of sushi. And it was many different kinds of sushi. It was really good. It's a good place. And it's right in my neighborhood. So as we're, uh, as, as I'm listening to him and I'm going, you know what? He brought this up four years ago. He's not learning his lesson, he's suffering, and he's continuing to do the same thing. And then as I'm sharing my own story, I'm realizing some big ahas that I've had, big um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Big um, changes that I'm making, not not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly changing about my personality, about the way that I show up with in relationships, the way I show up with women, all kinds of things. Not that I'm like this abuser of women or anything. Christoph, Atma Namaste. But certain things that are character flaws within me that I want to work on. And as I was listening to him talking to me and then me talking to him, I realized something one of my mentors said a few months ago, not only to me, but another person, that it's very, very difficult for people to change. It's very difficult for people to transform, right? And when I look at transformation, um, and I got this actually from the Landmark Forum, which I took in 1999 when my body was 19 years old. And one of the premises of the Landmark Forum is you, they draw a circle on the board. I'm not ruining it for anyone who hasn't done it. It's, I highly recommend taking it. It's a great personal development course, and it's a great personal development company. It can be a little bit group think, but hey, you know, when in Rome, go in Rome. Be, be, you know, be like a Roman. So when you go to these events, go all in. So, uh, Lynn, I'm going to say, so there's a circle that they draw on the board and then they, they draw a little line, like a little pie, right? So they're drawing like a little triangle within the circle. So like a piece of a pie and, and they go, all right, here's 10%, here's 10%. And then the rest of it is 80%. 10% is what you know, you know, you know, your name, you know, your address, you know, your phone number. You might not know anyone else's phone number, but you know, your own phone number, right? It's the things that you know, you know. Then the other 10% of the pie is the things that you know that you don't know. Like for instance, I know I don't know much about quantum physics. I know that I don't know much about astrophysics. I know that I don't, that I know nothing about calculus. I know almost nothing about geometry because I've never studied those. They're not interesting to me. They're not applicable to what it is that I do for my profession and for my life's purpose. So I know that I know I know that I don't know those things. Make sense? Then the other eighty percent of the pie, Raluca and I must say, is what you don't know. You don't know. What you don't know that you don't know. So, for instance, somebody who's never heard of chakras, who's never heard of meridians, who's never heard of the aura, knows that they don't know those things. So they don't even know that there's something out there for them not to know. But then guess what? You say, hey, have you ever heard of these things called the chakras? You ever heard of this thing called the aura, the meridians? And they're like, huh, what's that? So now they know about something that they don't know anything about. So transformation as I perceive it is not going from knowing about something to knowing a little bit more about something. It's going from not knowing anything about that specific thing and then knowing a decent amount about it. Cheryl, I'm a mistake. Meaning you're going from, you're, you're not changing something, you're transforming something. You're having an awareness about something you could not even have imagined previously. So meaning the experiences that I have in my meditation practice now, almost 20 years later, I could not have imagined those experiences 10 years ago right? My ability to comprehend those experiences were not even in my awareness. And that's why transformation is so challenging and so difficult for so many people because there's nothing you can really hold on to to take you from where you are to some other place, right? That you can't even fathom. And it's kind of like the butterfly. It's the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. That's how I see transformation, right? That's how I see transformation because the caterpillar into the butterfly is a completely different thing. The little tiny caterpillar can't even fathom what it would be like to have wings and fly everywhere at a rapid speed because all it knows is going from one tree branch to the leaf and eating and then coming back and that's it. Not very exciting, not very transformative, right? But going from the caterpillar to the butterfly, completely transformative. So Hamina says, sacred geometry, please study if you are missing something extraordinary. Ah, now sacred geometry, I know a little bit more about. I'm talking about the geometry that we learn in high school and in college. So let me retract part of that previous statement. 
Yes, sacred geometry, fascinating and very important for the work that we do, but everyday geometry that we learn, not my area of expertise, okay? Just to clarify. So, that's funny. Uh, I'm getting a text message. While we're doing these live streams, I realize I've been getting a lot of text messages while I'm doing the live streams. So, it's not easy, but it's always worth it. I can look at every area of my life that I've done deep, deep inner work and deep transformation around and realize that, and, and what's, what's also interesting about transformation, this has been my experience, this might not be your experience, is we have um, an expectation, I think in our pop culture, that somebody just wakes up one day and everything changes, right? They're just like, they're just like sitting in bed and they have this flash of light. They have this aha moment that forever changes their life. Now, in some cases, those can happen. But how do you duplicate that? How do you create an environment where you have a moment that's so powerful and so amazing that it alters your entire perception of reality? I think actually, in my opinion, that's why people do drugs, especially hallucinogens like mushrooms, LSD, DMT, because they are trying to alter their viewpoint or alter their perception of reality so much so that they're able to make connections to things that they thought were disconnected, which actually uh, my friend who did, who Jessica, I'm not mistake, who recently did ayahuasca, he did it. He has no interest in doing it again, but he's glad that he did it. And we were talking about his experience with doing ayahuasca. And I've talked to many people, spiritual and non-spiritual practitioners who have done ayahuasca, the, um, the South American herb ceremony. I don't know how we want to title it. And, um, and there's many different ways that you can do this practice. So he did it and we were talking about it and he says, you know what? That's actually a really good point because I said, what did you get out of it? And I said, I'm guessing part of what you got out of it was were, were ideas or concepts that were in your mind that seemed separate and disconnected and disassociated from one another. But when you had this experience, it kind of allowed you to connect the dots between things that you thought were un- unconnectable. And he goes, actually, that's a great way of saying it. So... I think that's why we do drugs, alcohol, LSD, mushrooms, anything and everything, even meditation, to shift our perception so we can perceive something completely different. So we can have an aha moment, a eureka moment, a breakthrough moment in our lives. Because who doesn't want that? But outside of doing it through drugs, through alcohol, through mushrooms, LSD, DMT, or other hallucinogens, outside of that, it's tough. It's tough. Sitting down and doing one meditation isn't going to make you enlightened. Even doing a thousand meditations necessarily won't make you enlightened. It'll increase your vibration. It'll change your viewpoint on the world. But are you going to be able to cognize all the, you know, all the questions of the galaxy through the ethers? Most likely not. But it's always worth it. So whatever you have to do to sit down and to transform yourself, even though it's going to be difficult, even though it can be mundane, even though it can seem like this is taking forever, it's always worth it in the end. Um, like for, for instance, tonight, um, I got lazy earlier in the day to do my spiritual practice. So tonight, I'm going to do my spiritual practice and I'm going to add a little bit more mojo to it, and it's going to be about three hours long. Now, for a person who has never meditated before, they think, you're going to do three hours of meditating? Are you crazy? I can't even sit still with my eyes closed for five minutes without going crazy. Granted, I didn't start my spiritual life off doing three hours of meditation, right? I started off with um, 20 minutes of meditation twice a day, right? 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. That's that was me starting my spiritual practice. But now, almost 20 years later, and over 57 spiritual retreats, healing retreats and meditation retreats over my life, I've obviously, <laughs> I hope, 
I've advanced to the point that I can sit and be still and do my practice for a prolonged period of time without going crazy. And this goes back to transformation. My perception of transformation then is much different than my perception of transformation now. And what I'm experiencing in my meditation practice now is beautiful. It's, it's awe-inspiring, right? To be able to connect with my higher soul the way that I'm able to do now that I wasn't able to do even a few years ago. Aye, Atma Namaste. You and I are now friends again on Facebook. And then also the way to connect to God, right? But if I, 20 years ago, meditated for a week every day and I said, I'm not enlightened, I'm not blissed out of my mind, I'm not clairvoyant, forget it, never mind, it's not worth it, right? And I just forgot about it or I just swept it under the rug, what would I have been missing out on? Like I always, I, I always think to myself how grateful I am Number one, to be a professional energy healer and to have my work and my life so intimately interconnected, right? But I think to myself, thank God I had the determination to keep going with my practice because my practice has not been easy for 20 years. My practice has stirred up more things within me than I am comfortable sharing with you guys in a group. Trust me. But at the end of the day, Right now, 20 years later, next month, actually, in five days, in five days, it'll be my 20th year consciously on the spiritual path, meaning consciously sitting down and doing a practice daily. In five days, it'll be 20 years, which I'm super excited about. I don't know if I get like a, like a, like a, a watch or a pat on the back from the great ones like i don't i don't know what what that means right it's for me it's just another day in the life of the soul doing the work that the soul has to do but um can't believe it's been 20 years it, like blows my mind so i'll probably do some live stream about that on my birthday and i always do a special ritual on my birthday in the morning and i've been doing that for probably 5 years now and it kind of sets the tone for the rest of my my sun cycle. You go, Atma Namaste. So um, it's worth it. It's worth it. Transformation is super challenging. Anything worthwhile in life is super challenging. But if you stick to it, it's worth it. Aw, uh, thanks, I appreciate that, girl. <laughs> Wish to be as constant as that. So be it, so be it, so be it. It was like... Um, Talking of constancy, I remember seeing this father. I saw these two different videos on YouTube. You can check them out. One was this father who was very heavy set. I think he lived in um, he lived in a mountain state. I don't remember exactly where. I want to say Wyoming, but I could be wrong. Very very heavy guy, like three hundred and fifty pounds, out of shape, big beer belly, you know, big scruffy beard, shaved head. Um, and wasn't and he wasn't in good shape, right? And he had four kids. And he thought to himself, you know what? My kids are still young. My kids are still going to need me. And my health is not so good right now. And so he started going, you know what? I'm just going to start walking in the mountains. Right? You have elevation goes up. Elevation goes down. I'll get a good workout. Anything that I do right now as as a big heavy guy is going to be beneficial to me. So within a uh, roughly within a six-month period... He ended up losing about 100 pounds. Now, I don't recommend that. That's super intensive. A healthy person, an average person loses about 1% body fat per month if they're working out. If you're morbidly obese, you can lose about a 1.5% to 3% body fat per month. As you get more fit, it's harder to lose that percent of body fat. Like it's half a percent per month. So he went, he he basically lost 100 pounds within a six-month period. And the guy's unbelievably fit. Like if you look at him six months before starting and six months after, it literally looks like a completely different human being. Like the, like the guy is uh, gorgeous, like super fit, super good looking. And he did that within a matter of six months. But what if he went on one of those hikes going into the mountains 
and after 20 minutes said, you know what? It's just too difficult. It's not worth it. I'm just going to pass. I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the best I can to live as long as I can support my kids as long as I can, but I can't do it. It's too difficult, right? Look at what he would have missed out on. He literally transformed into a different human being. It doesn't even look like the same guy. He transformed. Now he has developed certain skills that he can carry with him in other areas of his life for the rest of his life. Because what did he have to develop? Constancy of aim and effort and non-laziness. He knew what he wanted and he knew he had to be consistent with it every single day. Do you think that's important with the relationship with his partner? Do you think that's important with the, the, um, the, his ability to earn income, right? He also had to practice accurate perception and correct expression. He had to see where he was and where he wanted to go and the necessary steps on how to get there. He had to go, look, self-honesty. My body's not doing so well. My body's not healthy. My body's actually very, very sick. Instead of going, you know what? I'm not, uh, you know, I could lose a couple pounds, but it's not that bad. My blood pressure is not that high. My bad cholesterol is not that high, right? Justifying, rationalizing to oneself. So he had to practice constancy of aim and effort and non-laziness, accurate perception, correct expression. He had to practice um, loving kindness and non-injury. Loving kindness in the sense of living the way that he was living was causing his physical and emotional body injury. But then the new way of living was a, was a form of loving kindness and non-injury to his physical and emotional body. So all the things that he did to go f- to lose 100 pounds within a six-month period transformed him into a different person. It's pretty amazing, right? But it wasn't easy, but totally worth it. And then there's another story, which you can also find on YouTube, of a gentleman who... Again, very heavy, very overweight, and a disabled veteran. Um, Like messed up hair, messed up facial hair, um, baggy clothes because he was trying to hide himself. Not he wasn't proud of himself. He wasn't proud of who he was, Um, and he suffered from a disability. He was walking with a cane, young guy, like late twenties, early thirties, but probably seventy-five pounds overweight. And then something inspired him to start practicing yoga. Well, he started practicing and he started filming himself every single day, right? Filming himself of like doing this yoga posture, that yoga posture. Everything that he did in the beginning, he needed a chair. He needed multiple blankets, multiple blocks. He needed as much assistance as possible. And it would show video after video after video after video after video of him falling down, falling down, falling down, only able to hold a pose for one or two seconds and then falling, um, tripping, like all of these things, having severe aches and pains and soreness in his body because he was not healthy and he was also an injured veteran, right? And this went on, uh, he did this practice for about a year and again, transformed, couldn't tell the difference. The only thing is like, he has a, he has a very particular kind of um, eyes and mouth and you're like, that looks familiar from the heavy set guy to the to the lean fit yogi, their faces look kind of similar. And that's about it. But he's no longer walking with a cane. He's able to hold these very difficult hatha yoga asanas or the postures um, for a prolonged period of time. So was it easy? No. But was it worth it? Absolutely. Dean, Abba Namaste. You're late to the party, son. What are you doing? You live in the dream on Saturday in Australia? So that's, a, that's what I just wanted to jump on real quick with you guys and share is that Jose Atmanamaste is that transformation is not always easy. And to be honest, if we can be honest with each other, most people don't transform. Most people don't transform. And for some Strange reason, that's been kind of a fear of mine most of my life is like looking back on my life and going, wow, I could have done so much more. I could have become so much more. And I think that's something that I have programmed into my brain about becoming a better person every day in some way, shape or form. And I most often do that through my spiritual practice, 
through my meditation practice, and through my inner work, right? Other people, it might be in business. Other people, it might be in their physical health. Other people, it might be in the relationship with their children or the relationship with their spouse. I don't have a partner right now, so um, there's somebody very specific I have in mind. <laughs> um, but you have to find the thing that inspires you to become a better person. You have to, you have to, you have to have a why. Like we hear about this so often on Instagram and on Facebook and on uh, motivational videos on YouTube. You have to identify your why, right? For me, what I'm most passionate about is transformation. That's why my premier package that I offer that took me about 11 years to develop, it's called the Inner Transformation Package. Inner Transformation Package is a 10-week program of coaching, healing, and homework assignments over a 10-week period that by the end of it, you will be a different human being. Unequivocally. Like, I have no doubt whatsoever if you follow the homework, of us working together for 10 weeks, you will be a different person in ways that you cannot even imagine, just like the caterpillar cannot imagine what it would be like to be a butterfly. And I remember something very interesting, a mentor of mine who is very successful. He makes, uh, with his coaching, his coaching practice, he's not a healer per se, but he's a coach. Um, with his business, he does about um, $200,000 a month. Actually, more than that now, but this is a couple years ago. So he does about two hundred thousand dollars a month, and now at the time that one hundred fifty thousand dollar net. So every single month in his pocket through his coaching business, he would put one hundred fifty thousand dollars into his pocket after expenses, and paying his employees, his marketing, all that stuff. And he's very, very good at what he does. His specialty is helping people with their mindset, um, especially people who have addictions, because he was a 14-year addict um, of alcohol and drugs, primarily alcohol, but a little bit of drugs thrown in there. And he's had a very, very, very interesting influence on my life, which that could be a whole other hour-long stream easily. But he said something really fascinating to me. He's about $700 an hour. You heard that correctly. He makes more than most attorneys do, and he has more business than most attorneys do. So um, it's about $700 an hour to work with him. And I think his starter package, this is a couple years ago to work with him. Uh, I think it's like $3,000 or something like that, right? For coaching. And it's over the phone, right? 45 minutes of coaching, four coaching sessions, like $3,000, something like that. You know what he said to me? Blew my mind. When he told me this, I, I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm a namaste. He said, I couldn't believe this. Like, I still can't believe it. Even in my own healing practice, I'm like, is that accurate for my healing practice? He says, 80% of the people who pay him $3,000, $4,000 for coaching don't even show up for coaching. Can you imagine that? Here's three thousand. Here's four thousand dollars, and they don't even show up for coaching. Interesting, isn't it? I'm pretty sure he doesn't refund their money. I think he has it like <clears throat> in his in his clause. Like, I'm willing to show up and coach you. Are you willing to show up for your co- your own coaching? Right. So uh, when he told me that, it made me feel a little bit better. Like I've had clients that I've worked with that I had certain expectations for them. I wanted to bring them from where they were to where they wanted to go. And th- our expectations didn't match. And so we weren't a good fit for one another. That hasn't happened a lot in the past 15 years, but it has happened, right? When you do thousands of healings, it's going to happen eventually, right? He's done over 80,000 one-on-ones. Over 80,000 one-on-ones. He's been doing it for about 25 years, but blows my mind. So again, coaching, healing, bringing somebody from where they are to where they want to be. The expert's job is to have all the tools in their toolbox and to have all the knowledge and to be able to speak the language of the person that they're working with. Ana, Amanamaste. 
But at the end of the day, the client, the patient, the protege, the healee, has to do the necessary work to transform themselves. Pedro says, just like joining a gym, many don't show up despite paying. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Most people um, make their New Year's resolution January 1st. All right. January 1st. I'm going to like get into the best shape of my life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Solar plexus energy. They go for a month or two and then they quit but they signed up for the whole year. So the gyms are like empty. What? When did it start falling off? I think it starts falling off at the end of March in most gyms in the United States. Like the membership goes up in New Year's Eve, you know, end of December, beginning of January. And then attendance drops off considerably two and a half, three months later. It's the nature of human beings. Right, So that's, that's why it's the nature of human beings. It's the collective consciousness of human beings. It's not an individual problem. It's a collective problem. That's why through your spiritual practice, through your meditation practice, through your healing practice, through developing greater awareness and understanding about who and what you are, you raise your vibration and you transcend or go beyond the collective. Have you noticed some very powerful people, whether in business, education, politics, spirituality, tend to be a little weird, tend to be kind of like um, going to the beat of their own drum that no one else can hear? That's because those people have transcended the collective. They're not ordinary people anymore. They're, for lack of a better way of saying it, they're extraordinary people. Now, those extraordinary people also have the ability to, to relate to the common people, to the ordinary people, to move some purpose or project forward. Like thinking of my own teacher on the back wall, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, he was a genius. He was beyond a genius. I mean that wholeheartedly. I, I worked with him very briefly for a few years before he left the body, but he was a genius and he was extremely powerful and extremely loving. And he was able to relate. Allah, Mama Namaste. He was able to relate to the common ordinary person, even though he was light years ahead of them in understanding, he was able to bring his energy down, his language down to be relatable. That's another reason that that made him extraordinary. I forget. It might have been Einstein who said this. I'm paraphrasing something along along the lines of an expert is someone who can explain the most complex jargon to the lay person. The most complex jargon to the lay person. So how brilliant is somebody? They're so intelligent that they can't relate to the ordinary person. They can't take a super complex idea or concept and explain it like you would be explaining it to a third grader. Not many people can do that, but somebody who knows their material backwards and forwards is able to explain it the kindergarten level, the elementary school level, the junior high, the high school, the college, the master's, the PhD, and beyond, right? And I remember when Master Cholo Koksui was writing his books, the pranic healing books, like our manuals, um, I think the first three books basic pranic healing, advanced pranic healing, and pranic psychotherapy, he would have his nephew, um, who was in the eighth grade at the time, proofread the books. So he'd write the manuscript, and then he would say, read this for me, please, and let me know if you understand it. Let me know if you have any questions. So his nephew would give feedback and say, I don't understand this. What does this mean? And he goes, okay, great. And then he would go back and rewrite it, because the goal was to have somebody with an eighth grade education be able to understand the principles. Like, how brilliant is that to think like, well, I could, you know, I'm a master of energy. I'm a master of spirituality. I'm a master of, you know, great universal truths and teachings. I'll talk on this level and expect the world to catch up to me. But nope, 
Grandmaster Cho Kuk Sui says, how can I provide powerful teachings that are simple to understand and easy to apply that the advanced practitioners, the intermediate, the beginners, and the neophytes, the brand newbies, can understand? That's a great teacher. That's an expert. That's somebody who is specialized, well, I'm going to specialized in transforming the life of many, many people. Grandmaster Cho Kuksui's impact in this world, even after just spreading pranic healing for 25 years, has impacted millions of people's lives. Think about that. Millions of people's lives. I'm still working on like having 100 people come to our meditations on Sundays. By the way, Yolas, Amma Namaste, or Yolanda, Amma Namaste. If you are looking to meditate with a group, if you're looking for healing in a group, join us every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Mountain Time. This, this week, we're working on removing fear. So if you want to remove fear to move your life forward, join us this coming Sunday. That's in two days. This coming Sunday for the Twin Hearts Meditation <clears throat> and the Pranic Healing Session on Fear. And uh, it's all the information is below this video on Facebook. You can see it. It's my cute little face, you know, and the blessing mudra with all the details. So just go below this video on Facebook. If you don't know where it is, just direct message me on Facebook. Um, at Christian Long. Um, so that's what I wanted to cover. I, we covered a lot of information super quickly. Uh, I hope you guys took notes. I hope you got value out of this. We try to add value every single day, no matter what. I always thought to myself, when I was growing up in spirituality over the past 20 years, I had the the blessings of being with really great mentors, people that spent a lot of time with me who were very, very advanced practitioners, advanced healers, advanced clairvoyants, um, people that had full-time healing practices. So I got to learn from great, great people. And I learned from people that were, you know, growing and evolving, right? And... Um, and I always remember saying to myself, man, what I wouldn't have given, what I would, what, I remember asking myself the question, what would I have wanted more growing up on the spiritual path? And I'm like, I would have wanted an advanced practitioner to have constant contact, co constant content and contact with. So, as part of my service, as part of Henry Atman Namaste, as part of my service, part, part of my healing practice, as part of my business, I'm always doing these live streams because I'm doing my best to sow seeds. Not that I'm this all-knowing healer or all-knowing clairvoyant or anything like that, but 20 years of experience, I've learned some things that are valuable to people, and that's why people pay me money for healing and coaching. Tony, Atman Namaste. So... Um, I hope you guys get value out of these streams. And if you do, share them on your Facebook page. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or share them uh, on your, your business page or whatever. That being said, for some reason my throat's getting congested. I think some... Hmm. So, if you are in need of healing, which we all are, I still get healing... I do self-healing and I have other people heal me. Um, go to ChristianArlong.com. It's my name. Don't wear it out. ChristianArlong.com and click on schedule a consultation or schedule a healing and let me know how I can assist you in your healing practice, whether professionally or personally. And I have many, many years of experience. You'll want to send congratulations. I do share with new healers. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There's a lot of people that need a lot of healing. Yeah, a lot of healing. So the the world needs so much healing. Physical healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, mental healing, spiritual healing. So much healing. It's quite amazing when you think about it. It's funny because I, I, I was uh, talking about transforming, right? And I remember there was a period of time in my life that I had to do an hour a day 
of healing on myself for like six months every day. And I was like, ugh, healing, self-healing again. And I would be like crying because I was going through like this huge emotional catharsis. And I'd be like crying and cleaning and crying and cleaning. (laughs) And I was like, is this ever going to end? And it's like now, many years later, the realization is, no, it's not going to end. It's going to change how it looks, but you're always going to need to do inner purification. You're always going to need to be doing your meditation practice. You're always going to need to be doing healing, receiving healing or doing self-healing. Um, Steven just came to laptop, been on the phone. On the phone, yo. Right on. Steven's one of our most regular newbies. Long, long time pranic healer and erotic yogi who was off the, uh, what is it, off the map? Is that what I'm looking to say? Off the map for a couple years. Used to be on these live streams a lot years ago. In the past six months, you've gotten back on the on the bandwagon. So it's good to see you, as always. Um, what else? Yeah. That's what I want to leave you guys with tonight. <clears throat> Transformation is not easy, but it's worth it. Transformation is not easy, but it's worth it. Transformation is not easy, but it's worth it. Cannot emphasize that enough. And the more you want to transform, the faster you want to transform, the more work you're going to have to put in. You could get your PhD in eight years or you get your PhD in one year. Are the tests going to come faster? Is the homework going to come faster? Are the expectations going to go up? Is the time management going to have to be tighter? Are you going to have to remove more distractions? Absolutely. But, one, you get your PhD in one year versus getting your PhD in eight years. Which do you prefer? Which one can you handle? Stephen says, we get out of our healing what we put in. Spiritual bypassing means your problems and issues compound. Yep. Yep. You can't avoid life as much as we want to sometimes. It'll always come back around. Some way, shape, or form. No matter what. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for sharing your time with the group. Sharing your energy with the group. May God and my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, bless each and every one of your lives on all levels. May you be deeply and profoundly healed on all levels, without exception. I look forward to serving you either one-on-one coaching and healing or you can join our group meditation this coming Sunday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Details um, on my Facebook page below this video. Any questions, reach out to me directly and I look forward to connecting with you. This is Christian Arlong, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma. Namaste. Bye-bye.